Yep, Tibor and prep for it. Hey guys, how you doing? Good to see y'all. Good morning, it's everybody. One o'clock. Yep. Hi, prep. How you doing, prep for it? Hi, so Tibor. Pop in here. Tibor, he's here in a heat wave. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's me. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Uh, We're going to talk about uh, the economy. Let's see if my phone's turned all the way down. I always mess up. That's all right. We always mess up. <laughs> well, We're going to we'll... talk about the economy. I've uh, been watching uh, here locally, and it kind of goes up and down. And I know that uh, Al and I, we talk about it all the time, about oh, yeah. how it goes up and down. I have, a, a, I'm practicing a little bit with the Bitcoins, because Uncle Al kind of talked to me about it. So I'm yeah, kind of dabbling in that right. area. I have a playlist on Bitcoin, and I also have just put in up from Alux on um, people who lose a lot on Bitcoin. Three things you have to be careful on Bitcoin if you're doing an SHTF. Make sure your wallet's secure. You don't want multiple wallets. It's too easy to like, oh, there's your wallet. I have your Bitcoin wallet and I have all your money. It's too easy to do that. And the Chinese always Bitcoin mine. Now, I tell people, if somebody tells you you can make money on Bitcoin mining, walk away from them. They're committing a felony. That's not how to earn money on Bitcoin. Bitcoin money is a no-no. Okay? That's when the guys in black suits come and knock on your door. Hi, you're Will Russell. We want to talk to you downtown. <laughs> then you have to explain, I have no idea where I got the $42 million. Well, it's cocaine money, and we're trying to figure out why it's in your wallet. <laughs> You know, you're happy you got the money, but a lot of people are like, hmm. And then the Colombians, where is our money, Mr. Weather? <laughs> I prefer talking to the feds against angry Colombians. <laughs> so if somebody says they have a great program or app for mining Bitcoin, you walk away from them. You don't talk to them. Another thing is on Bitcoin security, if you forget your... um. Uh, what you might call it? Codes, your security codes for it. I know two people who lost about four million dollars. Guess what? Will on their uh, security co codes. This is uh, funny. How would you like to lose four million dollars if uh, uh, Dustin or somebody would throw away a piece of paper you had just security codes for your Bitcoin wallet? And you uh -oh. just made four four million dollars and threw away that scrap of paper. I'd be pissed. Yeah, that one guy did because he can't get into his wallet. He has over he, he invested early and he has over four million dollars from about uh, like a twenty five dollar uh, investment. And he's he's mad because I heard if you stay in your bitcoins. I heard this the other day. If you stay in your bitcoins till 2024, one Bitcoin will be worth the price of a, of a, what? Jaguar. Yep. Isn't that amazing? But, but I tell a lot of people, you have to be careful. Don't lose your security code. And two, what device are you using? Is it easy to break into your device? So I tell a lot of people... It better be a laptop, not a cell phone or a smartphone. These are really and easy to have. like an eight-digit uh, code Encryp to get into it. Right, encryption code. These, you can break into it with another uh, smartphone or a repeater. These things is like a sieve. It's a sponge. So never do Bitcoin on these. You could trade it and sell Bitcoin on these, but never for security. Security is like this on the laptop, hard drive. You want something secure that they can't pick it up. 
because you'd be mad if you made a thousand dollars and like find out you only have 45 cents somebody just stole your wallet wouldn't you be mad well yeah that happened to me the other day what you got I had like stole? 42 dollars in my bitcoin thing and i went look, look, went look again i only had four dollars oh you got raided <laughs> Yeah, you have to go back on check on your security. You might have to close that wallet because now they know your wallet. It's open to them. They could That's what I was in. thinking. I better go through a different place. Right. If they could get to that, close it out, go to a different uh, uh, what call it, carrier because what the, either the carrier is doing it, the, removing your funds, or a third party like the Russians and Chinese are removing it. Remember, it's a digital currency. And I have to That's warn you. It makes it too easy for other people to get to it. Right. But also, on the bit, nice side is, uh, on Bit, uh, when they don't do Bitcoin money and you do it legally and honestly, you get, instead of losing $45, you gain $45. So once you lose that money, that means that site is corrupted. You cannot use it. So remove it, get rid of it, destroy it, and get your four dollars back. Get my four dollars back. Yeah. You see, I think it's let me look. I think the name of it is uh let's see. BitPay. BitPay. And they were pretty good there for a long time and then all of a sudden it started jumping up and down. Right. That means somebody's tacking into your account, folks. When you see it's not progressing, but it goes like this, that's a warning sign. That means somebody hacked into your account. Or I think they were hacking into it. I think the people that were running it were doing it. Could be. I also heard that, uh, did you guys hear about uh, uh, asymmetrical, asymmetrical, uh, he got canceled. Yeah, from his job. Yeah, they got, uh, somebody got pissed off at him and turned him into his employer. Yep. Like I said. And he lost his job him. over it. Because it was, a it was YouTube activity. Yep. So you got to be careful about what you're saying on uh, YouTube. Or any social uh, platform right now. Any because, social platform. Yeah. Right now. Because right now we're under control of the Chinese folks. So please be careful. Ah, whoops. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong one, Jay. I hit a K instead of J. So the reason I brought that up is because I'm showing you guys how easy it is for them to do a run on the banks. Oh, yeah. And even if you are uh, just got your wallet for Bitcoin, your wallet's a bank. And they can run that on, make a run on that real easily. Right. So when you do, hi, Tasha, when you do digital course, be very careful because you have to really secure these things. And uh, like I said, the big problem with digital currency, a lot of people don't look at my playlist. And I warn people, check it out. Only invest a small amount until you know that site is secure. If it's secure, then you put in bigger amounts. If it's not secure, don't do that. I always do Bitcoin direct. And I don't talk about you it know, at uh, all. Here's what, I learned on, here's what I learned on that stuff, too. And I learned that by listening to Uncle Al, you guys, is, is if you're going in there and you go to put uh, just a couple of dollars in there just to check them out, and then they come back and they go, oh, no, you can't put $2 in there. You have to put $50 in there. See, this happened to me. They wanted me to put $50 in there. And I think that uh, that was a way for them to go in there and grab my money and, and go along their way. Because right. I went in and found some that would only take one or two dollars, 
And I had better luck with those guys than I did with the ones that were trying to actually push hard enough on me to get me to get rid of my $50. Right. If they ask for a larger amount, like I said, one or two dollars, you check out the site. Uncle Alan is, uh, sorry, I gamble. I always do a hundred bucks and I always check the site. If they withdraw, that's a Chinese site or a Russian site. The Chinese have a really bad uh, Bitcoin mining operation. 62% compared to the rest of the world. United States, how many Bitcoin oper miners are there in the United States, percentage-wise? I'm not sure. Six? Yeah. And five of them, I mean, four of them are arrested by the FBI and the FCC for illegal activities of banking. So they got busted. So there's only two left. And they got lawyers in Atlanta fighting for, we're not guilty. We're just charging fees. And the and, <laughs> and the U.S. government says, well, if you're charging fees, then you owe us taxes. And they say, are you a United States company? And they say, yes, we are. Where are you located? In Zimbabwe. And they said, you got 30 days to bring <laughs> proof that you are a United States company and then you have in here, United States, not a foreign country. If you do banking at a foreign country, then you'd be like the other four facing, well, 40 years. What are you in here for? Uh, electronic banking. <laughs> I killed my wife and kids with a crowbar. You know, they don't want that. <laughs> and I have a really good story about the guy in Nigeria who did the scams. Hi, I'm a Nigerian prince which he was, and he scammed people all over the world until he got caught. Now he's in prison for life, but he made a deal with the prison. He bought the prison. So what happened was instead of, you know, rotting in the little jail cell, he had a whole wing. He made it into a penthouse. <laughs> he had swimming pools. The rest of the prisoners complained to the government. Government went, went over to the prison like, what the hell? One side of the prison is like a typical African prison. Other side of the prison, it's a holiday resort. They were making money. He was <laughs> renting out that side of the prison as a resort and using the prisoners as helpers, you know, <laughs> as servants, as waiters, as bartenders. And he would pay them good. So they kept their mouth shut. They said, I made more money in this prison than outside working in Nigeria because he was paying U.S. Uh, uh, rates and they said I only made $12 outside here I made a uh, $575 which is like big true because it takes longer when you do that now uh, we have to skip from digital right now and get into regular SHTF on bank runs right now most banks do not have $10,000 in it if you try to withdraw $10,000 from your account, I like to have $10,000 in cash. They'll balk. They don't have that much in their in their amount of money. If 20 people that do that, the bank has to close. They don't have that kind of funding. Every day, a bank only has under $100,000 for business transaction. And that's set. If somebody came in, like your, save, your savings account, let's say a passbook, and you withdraw, ask to withdraw ten thousand dollars. They go because they you don't have to come back. I, I I've done that. They ask you, we can do that, but you're going to have to come back in three they days. Have to go, yeah, they have to go get the money. Yeah, from a bigger bank to cover their business side of the bank. Because I keep telling people, if you rob banks, it's a lot smarter if you just rob a Burger King. They have more money than than a bank. Because the bank doesn't transact. It just holds money from one source to another source. So if we have a bank run on a small bank like Sun Bank in the South, on what, remember in 2008, well, when they had the yep. bank runs? Yep. People were, got nervous and they did bank runs. And what happened, Sun Bank did not have it. And those people, it's federally insured. I got to keep telling them it's not federally insured, insured, because a lot of hinky things that both parties did, both political parties, screwed up the banking system and federal banking system. So I have to warn you, 
you might not get all of your money. It's that we're insured to $100,000. If the bank's really messed up internally by its books, you only get 40% of the, that, excuse me, 40% of that from my example, SunBank. I put $85,000. I only got back 40%. Because you know, they, got that was, little, uh, they got that little decal on their windows that say they're FDIC approved. Right. Covered, the, you know. They covered. were to get it. If you went in there to get your money after they got heisted, they would tell you to go blow up because they wouldn't have the money, you know. Right. They, they would just have, have that emblem on their doors to keep their customers happy, more or less. Right. I had to tell this to two financial advisors. And I smack him in the head. Also inspired John. If you believe that stuff, I could sell you the Brooklyn Bridge. And you will pay me <laughs> double time and even rent me out a nice hotel room. You have I got to a understand. bridge out in the swamp I want to get rid of. You want it? <laughs> right. You're safer off, like Jay said and Thor said, with uh, credit unions. Credit unions are smaller banks local because they do have to have money. They don't have a bigger bank to back them. So they have to have more accounts in there. Also, I tell people, if you do, like I always say for beginner people, passbook savings. It's not for savings for retirement. You use that for leverage. Uh, Will knows what I'm talking about, leverage. Right, yep. right Will? Yep. Because with that, you get what? Free checking fees. You don't have to pay every month 17 bucks. It's free because you have a minimum of $10,000. You could get free checks from some banks, free services from some banks. You have to read the freebies. If you put $10,000 in a savings account and don't touch it and always put $1,000 every month, the bank feels secure. Now, there's a way to transfer accounts, like you could transfer that $10,000 into your checking account in the same bank, that means they only have to change figures and numbers. They don't have to change money. It's not going out of the bank. It's changing from one account to another account. And that's it's all just a numbers game. Right. And so you don't have to worry. They don't have to worry about it. But when you take physical form, like in a cashier's check or like in green cash, they get nervous. Because I told a couple of my banks when I had it under my name, but I don't do it under my name anymore. I do it under my nephew's or my cousin's name. So uh, they get nervous because I incorporated the family. It's a side corporation. I, I told them, if we have any trouble or anything goes wrong, we will pull out all of our accounts. I made three bank presidents quit because I said, that's 15 Asian families pulling out all their money at the same time in one day if I do a one phone call. And I went up to the bank president. I told him, how many outlets of your bank and your major bank do you have? And they got nervous, real nervous, because we own property, not under Uncle Alan's name. Uncle Alan's broke and poor, but crazy like a fox. Think about it. I have nothing taxable. I am broke. I wear a Salvation Army t-shirt. Okay, this house is not under my name because I had two strokes. I could drop every day and I'd go probate. Nope. Put it in my brother-in-law's name. Why? Because if anything happens to me, this house will be available for my mother or my little nephews to move in just in case. I don't want any of my family to be homeless. True, uh, Tibor, we all know that. Yeah, and it, thing is, you know, if all you got to think about it, when all this, excuse me, <coughs> when all this happens, there's probably going to be like uh, chaos in the streets. That's the best way I know how to put it. Right. That, like in the, with all those people going crazy out in the street, everybody, if you're doing your uh, due diligence and got your uh, economy on the right keel, then you've got what you need. And everybody else is just going right. Shit. 
Right, and Tibor, if you bring up Tibor, the last statement he made, they are now reporting transactions over four grand are being reported to feds. It used to be nine grand because the way the economy is right now, they're all freaking out, so they dropped the nine grand to four grand. Four grand is to most gamblers and everybody else who deals in this mess. Businesses, this is a drop in the bucket. So a lot of businesses got really n nervous. Let's yeah. See. She went off the prep for it was saying she doesn't do uh, uh, Bitcoin, but not a lot of people do Bitcoin uh, prep work. You have to be really it's, careful. Uh, it's kind of a sneaky little game they play. <laughs> If you like, although I heard, I heard the other day that it's starting to come around, in uh, actually come around in the uh, uh, what in the stock market world, right? Starting but, to become uh, known as as real money, right? But again, people, be careful. It's a digital currency. I gotta keep saying this. It's it not does something that you can put your hands on and get right. Hold it. It's, it's like this. It's not physical. Physical is gold. Physical is cash. Physical, I don't say diamonds because it's garbage. Uh, physical is gemstones. I keep telling people diamonds are the worst investment. But why? Everybody likes diamonds. If you know what I know, like the beers, how many diamonds do the beers have in their storage lockers? Take a wild guess. Legal diamonds. Will? I was reading up here. What'd you say? How many diamonds do you think uh, De Beers have? That's from a South African diamond company has. And they've been mining for a hundred years. More ha a handful, probably. No, they have 130 tons of diamonds. So if that ever gets out on the market, diamonds is like a beer can. Because 130 tons of diamonds, and this is not industrial grade. These are prime gemstones. So I tell people, you got to know what you're doing if you're going to jewelry. And if you see this one, bartering and bartering items and skills, you got to know what you're bartering. Diamonds are the worst one. You couldn't get a sack of potatoes after World War II because the Nazis were like, oh, I have these That's diamonds. Before I put it up there, because. I wanted to say that same thing that you just said that bartering it will be a new age uh, in the SHTS thing, but unless you know what you're bartering, it won't be worth a pile of beans. Yeah, poo. But but really, the best bartering source is what in history that people barter for really hard: tobacco, sugar, alcohol. So Those would be the to, three big ones, yes. Yeah, if you like um, Patriot Farm, she's growing tobacco. I know another uh, gentleman from England, Rue. He's doing honey and mead. He makes I was gonna alcohol. say honey can be maybe one of the top ones. You're right, because he has hives, and also he makes booze out of it. Really strong stuff. Like people <laughs> come to his, come to his house and bring wine bottles. I fill them up. And he says it's about 40 <laughs> proof. And you can take a couple of swings of that and you won't see something. Uh, trouble with spices prep for it. Again, I tell people, you have to have whole spices. Once you grow, grind them up, it starts to decay. It goes rancid. And I tell this why they had the nutmegs whole. Because once you grind it up, you only have like a two-year lifespan. And that's how they shipped it, whole. They have a little nut grade made uh, uh, grater that came with each nutmeg. Trouble with spices is if it goes bad, you have, trust me, my own experience, five years later, hmm, this cinnamon's awfully black because <laughs> it will go bad. So you have to be careful. On dry herbs, dry herbs is fine, but again, with um, I tell people, every, plant a kitchen herb garden. That's your best bet, best form of trading. Somebody wants parsley. Somebody wants basil. 
Not a problem. Somebody wants garlic. You can make your own garlic powder. It's not that hard. And you can sell that. Because uh, once people start cooking meals by themselves without herbs and spices, it's like. Yep. Exactly. You try a salt free diet. See how long you. That's why I always have this, Mrs. Dash on hand. <laughs> I do my own cooking, so I know. I don't have Mrs. Dash's. I use a, I use that uh, Johnny's. Johnny's is my Mrs. Mrs. Dash. Yeah, I like Johnny's. Uh, salt, uh, folks, you have to be careful on salt. Doesn't matter if it hardens. There's two problems with salt. Iodize and uh, whatchamacallit, uh, canning. Canning does not have minerals. Iodize is forced ionization of the salts to provide uh, to prevent goiter. You cannot use Himalayan salts. That's too heavy mineralized for canning. Canning is a special salt that they use for uh, canning purposes. So you don't have a weird cloudy mixture in your fruit jar and you don't know what's, gee, that's kind of cloudy. And yeah, it's peach jelly. Uh, you sure? Or, you know. It was peach jelly. <laughs> <laughs> or pork. So, pure salt is uh, one of the biggest commodities. Uh, a flavor is different because it hits certain nerves. It's more for preserving, and salt's a big thing for preserving. They used to pay the Roman sol soldiers salarius, that means salt, in salt granules, and you could have a good time in town and have little salt packets. Here's a little pouch of salt. So you got a hotel room, wine, and a hooker. The Romans. <laughs> got to have hookers for a corral. <laughs> yeah. But like I said, salt's a big thing. And how far away <coughs> from the coast you are, you are, a thousand miles or I think it's 500 miles away from this coastline. If you're in the central states or where Will lives in Nebraska, salt is king. You could be King Will. I have a salt mine. If you have a salt mine, you're king of the world because salt oh, is no, I'm more... thinking uh, honey is going to be one of the top ones. No, uh, near the top ones, salt is. Because salt, you have to preserve food for the winter. Salt beef, salt pork, salt vegetables. Uh, I suppose uh, salt can be used to uh, prepare meats and stuff too. Right. And without salt, you know, <laughs> salt is king. See, you, uh, prep for and you want to start stocking up now. That's the thing is one of the important things. Right. Think about it. You're thinking about it and say, well, all that stuff's going to be pretty easy to find and whatnot. And you're not going to worry about it. But then something bad happens and everybody's running to the store to get it and it's not there. Right. So if you just go ahead and get it and put it away, you know, like Uncle Al says, grow it. After you grow it, uh, put it in a vacuum seal bottle somewhere. Don't crumple it up. Just put it somewhere in a, in a sealed bottle, and uh, still be in a hole in the plant in the plant form, and uh, then put it away that way. Right. Morton Salt has six major uh, uh, salt harvesting plants. One's under Lake Erie. One was in Louisiana. That made a big hole, and it's on YouTube. Uh, the other one is on the Pacific Coast it, near San Francisco. And there's three others. I can't remember where they're at. There's a salt mine in Utah, isn't there? Uh, they can't use that salt. That salt's too heavily mineralized. They quit using it when they find out people were getting uh, uh, mineral diseases from it. You know, when you take too much minerals? Uh -huh. Yeah, they seen people with swell heads, throats. What's wrong with your testicles? Uh, I have a mineral disease. I'm on a salt-free diet for four months. You know, you don't want to have bowling balls because the salt and Salt Lake it is all the salts from the local regions. It could have lead, uranium, titanium, phosphates. What else is in there, water? 
because it's saltier than the ocean, but it also has dissolved minerals. They have cobalt. They have, what was the other one they found out in St. George? Gave everybody cancer. Well, I thought there was a salt uh, quarry there that wasn't having to do with any of that salt there. Yeah, that's... And it was farther away from the Great Salt Lake. Yeah, that one is an ancient seabed salt. And that was safer until you couldn't mine it anymore. Because once they get past a certain level, the air temperature inside the salt mine reaches 212 degrees. So I don't think a lot of people want to work down there, Will. Oh, darn. They will if they want it bad enough. No, because the machines don't work at 212 degrees. It's like, yeah, let's set the oven at 212 degrees and we'll go in there and do his bookkeeping or do the show. You know, it does. It's too hot. Yeah, keyboard is right. It's, you have to have cor uh, bleh, uh, corveyor belts. Another thing that they suggest is maybe prepare yourself to uh, live without any of that stuff. True. But then you end up like the 13 colonies. Everybody was uh, sugar starved for, for that alcohol st starved because in the Caribbean, if you watch the Lost Pirate Kingdom, what their biggest fights was sugar, rum, big time rum. Because we we didn't do whiskey or beer yet in America. And the only alcohol you could get was from the Caribbeans like Jamaica. And their biggest product they sell to the United States was rum. And we're talking like 5,000 barrels of rum to Boston. <laughs> and they discovered, what? We can make our own beer? And we don't have to buy rum? They were really mad at the Germans when the Germans came to America. Because... We can make beer out of rye and barley and oats. And like, what? We've been drinking rum and we're paying through the nose for uh, a mug of rum and half our wages. <laughs> <laughs> and I could get a bucket of beer for a pence. That's English, old English money. <laughs> yeah, you can make mead too. It's pretty easy. Now, the other thing you could try to do is if you have a, a community that you're working with trying to say we can get out, out of here if we have to, is try living with no electricity. Yeah, that could Just be take good. yourself, pile everything in the car, and go out in the middle of nowhere and try to live with absolutely no electricity. For three days. Yep, for three days. That's without those little electric gadgets that you have or anything. There's no electricity whatsoever. If you can do that for three days, then you could be prepared for a, a all-out collapse. Uh, a trick, uh, Tasha, with mead, you cut it with fruit. It's not a true mead, but you cut it with fruit juices with the honey. You only need to ferment a small amount of honey. And then you add water, or you could add fruit juices. The Roman added fruit juices because honey was a very valuable commodity in the old world, in ancient times. The Romans, the Israelis, the Egyptians. So when they made mead, they added water to it. Of course, the Egyptians were also drinking beer all the time because who, who created beer? The Egyptians. And who did the Egyptians trade it to? Anybody who likes to drink fermented grains. So it went all over the place. Their biggest one were the Celts and Iberians. They got drunk really fast. What's this wonderful stuff? It's not made from grapes or honey. It's called beer. They filled all those urns up with, with the oh, beer. Yeah. Or you, with, the, with the wine that they made, too. And then yeah. they carried it all over through the desert and they traded it for other things that they could have of their own. Right. But most people prefer beer because of two factions. Fermentation for yeast. You make bread. Instead of eating flat unleavened bread, you have a nice loaf of bread. 
And that was hey, Eminem, big, how you doing, buddy? Hi, Eminem. That was the big thing for the Egyptians to trade with the Celts and the Iberians, and I forgot the other group um, that fought against Carthage. It was a big trade, big trade items. You had wine. Wine was great, but it doesn't sock your thirst. And a lot of people would not drink uh, Roman soldiers' wine, supa, which was soupy mess. It still is soupy mess because basically it's sour wine. It's more vinegar, less wine, and lots of whatever local water you have. Oh, it's green and chunky water. No problem. We'll strain it through sheep's wool, and we'll add sopa to it. Then you could drink the wine. Of course, most people would vomit through that because think of it. You just filtered green and brown chunky water and you added the coarse vinegary strong. I mean, it's strong. It's like 14% alcohol. It's the worst cocktail in the world. <laughs> <laughs> and Prep for it says they drank it mostly in Europe because they couldn't drink the water. True. Because the water was probably rancid. Rancid or green and chunky with something floating in it. But beer needs clean water. So when you drink beer, it's healthier for you. You get a lot of vitamins. Uh, naturally brewed beer, you have vitamin B1. It's equal to a calorie. If you drank a quart of beer back then, it's equal to two loaves of bread. Remember when they have Lent? In the Catholic services, all those fat months. Yeah, we don't need bread or cheese. We'll be drinking beer throughout Lent. And that's what they did. They would just, you know, we did prayers and sang in choirs. And all day they were just <laughs> hugging beer. The, sacri the sacrificial wine tasted. That's what it was. When I was growing up, We, I became an acolyte so I could have the, the wine taste. Yeah, but what's kind of funny with the wine taste, it doesn't have that much calories, but beer does. Uh, beer, old beer had a <laughs> lot of calories. And I, when I tell a lot of people it's like a bitter or an ale, because it's really dark, really thick, and really rich. Yeah, you can live on beer and bread all the time. That's not a problem. You add bacon, it's even better. Because during the Middle Ages, the Catholic Church had three mottos. You'll have a, a big chunk of bacon, old-style old bacon, not the nice, crispy stuff. <laughs> I mean, here's your bacon. Thun. It's like, but it isn't sliced. No, it's chunked. But it has so much salt on it. Yeah, we just put it out of the salt pits. Here you go, your bacon. Thunk. And then Pork. you get bread. <laughs> then you get your bread. Thunk, here's your bread. But it's hard and I can't slice it. It's bread. Thunk. And then Put some of that lard on it. <laughs> or worse, here's your beer. And it's not in a little frosty can. It's in a crock. Five gallon crock. <laughs> Thunk. Here's your beer you're, for the you're day. Dipping out of it. And you that's your whole meal for the day. And the church guarantee that in all Catholic church countries. You'll get bacon, beer, and and bread. So you're crocked. That's the word where the word came from, crocked. You drink five gallons of beer. I'll see how you react for the most of the day. Ah, oh, the water's bad. I'll drink some more beer. Well, we're going to give the infants. Here, give them some beer. It's better than milk. That's why you always saw them leaned up against trees with these big old urns in their arms, you know? Yeah, it's like five gallons of beer. Yeah. And I have a chunk of bacon, dunk, and a chunk of bread, dunk. Remember, these were not refined breads. These are like brown breads. And it was like, dunk, dunk. Here's an example I always keep on hand for leaven, uh, unleavened bread. See how thin and flat this was? <coughs> so if you got leavened bread, it's three times the size and heavier. This is leavened bread. This is basically rye. And I tell everybody, it's this brand. Watch out. They still make it the same way. For hundreds of years. For Lent and stuff. But I tell a lot of people, 
you know, the three Bs, beer, bread, and bacon. <laughs> yes. Um, modern APs are reboiled to prevent uh, spoiled beer. They had bad, uh, bad beers. They spoil quickly. <coughs> yeah, you can make any kind of berry into wine, too. And Gil just arrived. Hi, Gil. Hey, Gil. How you doing, buddy? So if you're doing... Have, a, have a beer for us, will you? If you're doing any... <coughs> bod Are you okay, Will? Yeah. If you're doing any... Better now. Or you're bartering skills, remember, if it's really a weird or wartime economy, not the 1930s type of economy, where you still have laws, but if it's gone... Uh, WTF, what you know, or SAT. so when you saw those big camels going across the the desert with those big urns on their back, probably carrying big old kegs of beer, yeah. But it what, like uh, Tibor said, it's probably the seed of beer because once they reached the destination, they added water from the local sources and probably added more grains, then you have a new batch of beer fresh and ready to go because that's the way they survive on long trips. They didn't sure. have... Go ahead. The seeds, though, they would have to plant them. No, no, That'd no. That'd be no. like barley. No, the, the uh, seed, a seed is the starter mix for beer. That's That will travel well. You can't drink it because it's... It's really thick. It's f fermenting mass. Is that barley then? Uh, it could be barley, wheat, uh, oats. One of the old school grains. Oats. Oats might work because oats, they swell. Right. And they also ferment. Yeah. So that travels well. That's the seed. We always call it the seed. Uh, <coughs> the seed compound where you make your beer. Are you okay, Uncle Hal? Yeah, I'm fine. Take it's a just, drink of water. Got it right here. It's sometimes <laughs> when my medication comes back up. Yeah. As the I same got, way I have to back time for my medication. All right, I got two more I got to take in a few minutes. But like I said, folks, when you're doing the economy in SHTF, make sure you're not in the region where it's not like Mad Max time. You want a stable region to do your business. And the big thing like, is that your money. The money, it all starts with the money because if you don't have the money and you don't have it uh, managed just for you and your family, then it's not going to work for you. Right. Uh, like I, Tibor brought it up pretty well. Hillbillies call that mash, but if you study sociology and you study culture, you have the United States wasn't a melting pot. It was different tribes and groups of people that spread out through the Americas and through the Appalachians where the hillbillies were Scotch-Irish or Irish Scots or uh, whatchamacallit. Germans headed up north. The Norwegians headed up north. The Scotch-Irish hit through the Appalachians. The bad thing about this, folks, and I tell a lot of people, is you get into a comfortable bubble in your homesteading lifestyle. You get trapped in it. And then sooner on later, it's going to end up the, like the McCoys and the Hatfields. You start feuding. But when it kills you, <laughs> right. And you know what they fought over? A pig. <laughs> we had 14 years of feuding. We had cousins too, and we're kind of his pig, his pig ran over on my land. Or you had sex with my pig? No, your pig ran over to Uncle Billy Bob's land. No, you had <laughs> sex with my pig. Okay, it, it gets to a point where you're clustered into that thinking, and like the Appalachians, you had hillbillies. If you go up north, you had the uh, what you call it, Dutch Germans. And they went through the Great Lakes because guess what? They had you could track by the food they ate: cabbages, sausage, and beer. That Remember? sounds good, don't it? Yeah, and <laughs> if you track it right, 
you could track each group's westward migration. Of course, the Native American and the Spanish and the African Americans didn't enjoy that much because most African Americans were brought into bondage because it wasn't the colonists, it was the people in England that started the business. And it also went through Spain, France, Netherlands, Holland, uh, most uh, what you call mercantile traveling countries like Portugal. And people sounds you sound like a moonshiner, Tibor. <laughs> That's Scotch Irish. He sounds like a uh, moonshiner. He says actually started over water rights. Yeah, that's true also. But you got to remember, once you get into that bubble cluster of families in one region, you're all Scotch-Irish and your cousin married his cousin. Sooner or later, you're trapped into that bubble. And you think everybody's a foreigner. Well, he's from New York. He's a foreigner. I thought it was over a girl. It could go anything. It could be water rights, could be a pig, could be a, could a, have been a girl pig. It could be anything. <laughs> Once you get trapped in those bubbles, which happened up till 1930s, 1930s, everybody was trapped in this bubble. And they're thinking. All right, trip for it. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Tasha. You get trapped in these little tiny bubbles. And a good example. Uh, it just switched on me. I didn't want that screen. Ugh. Oh, your grand folks, they were the shiners. I could have swore because you were talking like a moonshiner. My grandfather was a moonshiner too. He shined it down in Tennessee. He used to make me come down and chop, chop the sugar cane so he could uh, make his moonshine. Now that's hard work, folks. I thought it was fun because I was just a kid. Right, but do that for 40 years, you don't think it's fun. No. But late, like I said, folks, the uh, real trouble when you do bartering and bartering skills it's like a drug deal you got to make sure they will pay up you don't get killed you know we got their sugar now shoot them <laughs> you don't <laughs> you don't want to have that the shot that rang through the holler right so you want to make sure everything is up board when you're doing this on economies if you're doing skills make sure no other people has that skill a lot of people are doing leather work it's a handicraft if it's too easy, that means everybody else is doing it. Like Will comes up, I do fine leather work. If 40 people competes with Will, what is the price of his merchandise going to cost? A lot. It goes down. It depends on skill. It depends on the skill, but if you've got a lot of people doing it, then that's a competition window in there. Right. and Could usually, make it go up. Could make it go down. Mostly down if you have too many people in the same field of leather smithing. It was only like two people and Will, he still has the advantage in competition. But if you have 47 people doing leather work, yeah, and one person moonshining, hi, Uncle Alan Moonshine. And who's going to make the money in the aftermarket economy? Uncle, Uncle Alan's Will. <laughs> Uncle Al's honey, Uncle Al's mead, Uncle Al's hookers. Uh, no, uh, didn't say that. Hey, Uncle Al's uh, rental Bible students. But uh, like I said, you have to plan ahead. Hi, I, That's I, the I, biggest course. thing is planning ahead. Right. Out of all and, stuff in my notes, you still got to plan far enough ahead to make it all work. Right. And on gold and silver, remember, folks, on gold and silver, it could be confiscated by the government as illegal government goods because they did that in 1930s. You couldn't get coin and gold. 
and they're chase, still chasing after one guy for how long was it? 1933? 90 it was over 100 years. They're chasing this one family for having a 1933 gold piece. Yeah, I got all my leather and gold pieces locked away in the safe. True. I don't brag about it or anything. I just keep it locked up. Right. You have silver, right? Yeah. Good. Because I remember, have more silver than I have gold. Right, but it's easier to cut silver. Uh Remember pieces of eight? That's you cut off pieces of uh -huh. a Spanish royal, yeah. which is a silver coin, and you get pieces of eight, which is eight pieces of silver. Yeah, they have their little ingots now that you can do that with. Right. You just buy a whole sheet of them, and then you just break them off as you need them. See, thinking ahead, folks. Because a lot of problems is trying to find a, a currency that you could trade between two parties. That's the big thing. Irene said she got her some stuff buried. Uh, be careful. Be careful. Somebody might dig it up. Right, or it got crushed by the people. I got to do a video on cascading, caching. Remember, you cannot put in a single wall container. You have to prevent the dirt going. Because if you looked at the old burial graves of Ireland, the people that were preserved, they kind of got flattened after centuries of dirt. Oh, just... Some of them had, uh, the ones that had double-walled caskets or coffins or whatever, they did pretty good. Right. They looked normal. But that one, um, a gold mask and silver armor, it got crushed. I mean, it looked like a pancake. And I was wondering, why do they wear pancake masks? And then I asked the curate, oh, no, that was the weight of the dirt crushing the skull into the mask. Because that's not a backing. That was the skull after years of being compressed of dirt. So if you have your little storage box and it comes out to be that thick after years of being buried. <laughs> That's why they had strong boxes back in the old days. Okay, what time's your show tomorrow, Gil? Gil's at 7, I think, 7 p.m. Is he still here? No, I think he went for lunch. He just got back home, and he's been out about, he has uh, planting stuff to do. So he went to lunch, and we're at, almost at the top of the hour. Yeah, well, do you have anything? A, I was giving him a chance. No problem. Do you have anything on your list that we didn't cover? No, I, my list is all gone, and we covered everything on there. The thing, the biggest thing I want you guys to remember is you have to develop a plan of action, and you have to stick to it. That is the biggest thing. Make sure that you have the money in order. The plan of action right underneath that should be your uh, financial goals, and you have to stick to them. If you can't stick to them, then you're probably not going to survive. Right. And like I said, folks, it's also fluctuation. Because like Bitcoin or side hustles, it changes moment by moment. So be very careful. I have a friend of mine. I have a side hustle. Next month, why are you going to jail? They caught me with my other side hustle. Yeah. You're not supposed to do that when you're doing that side hustle. Side hustles are fine, but don't make don't think that they're gonna be your savior. Right. It's only a temporary solution. That's why I tell people on uh, the do Uber deliveries, it's a temporary solution because once you start adding the cost of vehicle maintenance, gasoline, the mileage you cover, and taxes, how much do you think you get profit off of that? It'll pay to survive, but it won't make you, yeah, zero. It won't make you rich. And uh, well, do you have anything to close off? 
I don't, I'm working on a new video and uh, let's see. I'm going to be back Monday. Me and Al will be back Monday to entertain you guys one more time. Right. And then yeah. next week's uh, topic, not sure yet. <laughs> yeah, too, much, too many things going. It takes right. me a while to get everything lined up. Just work on it, Will. Don't worry. But uh, doing the remaining minutes. <clears throat> if, how you much guys, you if you guys uh, want to talk about anything, just make sure that you either email me or leave it in the comments, and I'll pick it up. We'll talk about whatever you guys have on your mind. Right. Uh, on Will, his about page on his about page has his business email. You can pick that up and send it to Will. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, there's some subjects we have to be careful. We cannot talk too much on political. We could skirt around the issue because we don't want to be closed like Stephen Crowler. You no longer have a YouTube channel. Pow! Uh, uh, it was a big time one got, got it here the other day. I can't think of his name. Stephen Crowler. He got, he got it big time, yeah. Yeah, he, he count, got canceled off of five social... Uh, uh, platforms and he's suing every one of them folks if you want to get your money now start suing one of the social media programs there yeah, that's the only way you're going to get your money that's for sure right and uh, also i warn people if you're working for youtube collect all the evidence so you don't spend a four-year vacation yeah hey, dustin we end up in the frame hello hey, dustin. so make sure you don't go into the pen so collect a lot of evidence. <laughs> if you're working for Google or YouTube or Apple or any of the big tech companies, because that's it. Kind of... Where are you going? Get my car and get me a coffee. I'm getting a coffee. <laughs> Okay, but folks, if you do, uh, make sure you have a good source of cash on hand, put it in a small safe. I do recommend the same amount of money that the banks report to the feds, which is four grand. Four grand is a joke to people who deals with money. I don't have money here. It's in my family's. Let's see, which nephew has it? Because they own a business. It's there in their business safe and it's secure and they got security. <clears throat> but you want that much money on hand because I had a bailout. Hey, Gil. Hey, Gil, I'm getting ready to leave. You better type in where <laughs> you're going to be at tomorrow. We're getting ready to get out of here. Yeah. Type yeah, in your where I'm going to be at uh, yeah. section. Yeah, in the comments, we have a two minute warning. Uh, but keep about four grand. Four grand's fairly easy. And I had to use it for a lot of things last year. And still, I haven't got paid back by my nephew. Oh, we'll pay it back, Uncle Al. <laughs> no, I want cash now, cash in hand. Yeah, I had to use some of mine out of my safe, too. Uh, I, I put it in my safe just a little at a time out of my bank. I have it in the bank, and then I'll just. Have my son go up and get some out of the cash machine, and I'll stick it in the envelope in the safe right. so it builds up in there. You know that way the bank doesn't know or the crap, feds. You know? And then still keep your bank account at the same level. You put money yep. into the bank. You yep. put money into the safe. You want to have something that uh, a, a form of currency that you can use. And two, credit cards are not. Cons uh, currency they're your Siri. so remember that folks that's i don't have any more i got rid of them good everybody should got rid of their credit cards i do have a debit card because it's easier banking and direct posits how many got their fourteen hundred dollar check from the government yet i didn't get mine i got a notice in the mail dear sir we having trouble with our paperwork we still have that's what they said to me too yeah a pain in the butt you guys get yours? I don't think nobody got theirs. And I got <laughs> bills to pay. Well, my son got his and my girlfriend got hers, but I haven't gotten mine. 
Haven't seen mine yet either. Oh well. Yeah. I guess and I'm just not impotent. <laughs> we're not impotent. We're just <laughs> old. Uh so we got about thirty seconds left. Anything you want to comment, Will? Waiting on Gil. I think he's got Gil. it. Yep. All right, guys, that's it. Right on the hour. See ya. Later, folks. <laughs>